James Knox Polk was the 11th President of the United States, serving from 1845 to 1849, before he became President. Polk served as the 13th Speaker of the House of Representatives 1835-1839 and 9th Governor of Tennessee 1839-1841. A protege of Andrew Jackson, he was a member of the Democratic Party and an advocate of Jacksonian democracy. Polk is known for extending the territory of the United States through the Mexican-American War during his presidency, annexing the Republic of Texas, the Oregon Territory, and the Mexican Cession after winning the Mexican-American War. After building a successful law practice in Tennessee, Polk was elected to its state legislature in 1823 and then to the United States House of Representatives in 1825 becoming a strong supporter of Jackson. After serving as chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, he became Speaker of the House in 1835, the only person to serve both as Speaker and U.S. President. Polk left Congress to run for Governor of Tennessee, winning in 1839 but losing in 1841 and 1843. He was a dark horse candidate in the 1840 for presidential election. As the Democratic Party nominee, he entered his party's convention as a potential nominee for vice president but emerged as a compromise to head the ticket when no presidential candidate could gain the necessary two-thirds majority. The general election, Polk defeated Henry Clay of the Whig Party after a negotiation fraught with the risk of war. Polk reached a settlement with Great Britain over the disputed Oregon country, with the territory for the most part divided along the 49th parallel. He won the Mexican-American War, resulting in Mexico's cession of the entire American Southwest. He secured a substantial reduction of tariff rates. With the Walker Tariff of 1846, the same year, he achieved his other major goal, re-establishment of the independent treasury system. True to his campaign pledge to serve only one term, one of the few U.S. presidents to make and keep such a pledge. Polk left office in 1849 and returned to Tennessee, where he died of cholera soon afterward. Though he is relatively obscure today, scholars have ranked Polk favorably for his ability to promote and achieve the major items. On his presidential agenda, he has also been criticized for leading the country into a war with Mexico that exacerbated sectional divides. A property owner who used slave labor he kept a plantation in Mississippi and increased his slave ownership during his presidency. Polk's policy of territorial expansion saw the nation reach the Pacific coast and almost all its contiguous borders. Polk's policy of territorial expansion saw the nation reach the Pacific coast and almost all its contiguous borders. He made the USA nation poised to become a world power, but with divisions between free and slave states gravely exacerbated setting the stage for the Civil War. James Knox Polk was born on November 2, 1795, in a log cabin in Pineville, North Carolina. He was the first of ten children born into a family of farmers. His mother Jane named him after her father, James Knox. His father Samuel Polk was a farmer, slaveholder, and surveyor of Scots-Irish descent. The Polks had immigrated to America in the late 17th century settling initially on the eastern shore of Maryland, but later moving to south-central Pennsylvania and then to the Carolina Hill Country. The Knox and Polk families were Presbyterian. While Polk's mother remained a devout Presbyterian, his father, whose own father Ezekiel Polk was a deist, rejected dogmatic Presbyterianism. He refused to declare his belief in Christianity at his son's baptism, and the minister refused to baptize young James. Nevertheless, James' mother stamped her rigid orthodoxy on James, instilling lifelong Calvinistic traits of self-discipline, hard work, piety, individualism, and a belief in the imperfection of human nature. According to James A. Raleigh's American National Biography article, beginning in early 1822, Polk courted Sarah Childress they were engaged the following year and married on January 1, 1824, in Murfreesboro. Educated far better than most women of her time, especially in frontier Tennessee, 
Sarah Polk was from one of the state's most prominent families. During James's political career, Sarah assisted her husband with his speeches, gave him advice on policy matters, and played an active role in his campaigns. Raleigh noted that Sarah Polk's grace, intelligence and charming conversation helped compensate for her husband's often austere manner. Polk's time in the White House took its toll on his health. Full of enthusiasm and vigor when he entered office, Polk left the presidency exhausted by his years of public service. He left Washington on March 6 for a prearranged triumphal tour of the southern United States to end in Nashville. Polk had two years previously arranged to buy a house there, afterwards dubbed Polk Place, that had once belonged to his mentor, Felix Grundy. James and Sarah Polk progressed down the Atlantic coast and then westward through the deep south. He was enthusiastically received and banqueted. By the time the Polks reached Alabama, he was suffering from a bad cold and soon became concerned by reports of cholera passenger on Polk's riverboat died of it. And it was rumored to be common in New Orleans. But it was too late to change plans. Worried about his health, he would have departed the city quickly but was overwhelmed by Louisiana hospitality. Several passengers on the riverboat up the Mississippi died of the disease, and Polk felt so ill that he went ashore for four days, staying in a hotel. A doctor assured him he did not have cholera, and Polk made the final leg, arriving in Nashville on April 2nd to a huge reception. After a visit to James's mother in Columbia, the Polk settled into Polk Place. The exhausted former president seemed to gain new life. But in early June, he fell ill again, by most accounts of cholera, attended by several doctors. He lingered for several days and chose to be baptized into the Methodist Church, which he had long admired. Though his mother arrived from Columbia, with her Presbyterian clergyman, and his wife was also a devout Presbyterian, on the afternoon of Friday, June 15th, Polk died at his Polk Place home in Nashville, Tennessee at the age of 53. According to traditional accounts, his last words before he died were I love you, Sarah, for all eternity, I love you. Borman noted that whether or not they were spoken, there was nothing in Polk's life that would make the sentiment false. Polk's funeral was held at the McKendry Methodist Church in Nashville. Following his death, Sarah Polk lived at Polk Place for 42 years and died on August 14, 1891, at the age of 87. Their house, Polk Place, was demolished in 1901. Here's a list of 10 unique and intriguing facts about James Knox Polk. 1. Little formal education. Polk had limited formal education. Despite this, he was a diligent and self-motivated learner. Later graduating with honors from the University of North Carolina. 2. Worked as a clerk before his political career. Polk worked as a clerk in a mercantile establishment, gaining valuable experience in business and finance. 3. Married his mentor's daughter, Polk married Sarah Childress. The daughter of his mentor, while she was just 20 years old, she became an influential figure during his presidency. 4. Highly disciplined work ethic. Polk was known for his disciplined work habits, often working tirelessly from dawn until midnight to accomplish his goals. 5. Territorial Expansionist His presidency oversaw one of the most significant territorial expansions in U.S. history, acquiring vast territories through treaties and the Mexican-American War. 6. Initiated Naval Academy and Smithsonian Polk was instrumental in establishing both the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis and the Smithsonian Institution. 7. Prohibition of alcohol in the White House Polk and his wife. Sarah prohibited the serving of alcohol in the White House during their tenure, setting an unusual precedent for that time. 8. Portrait photography. Polk became the first sitting president to have his photograph taken, setting a trend for future presidents. 9. Controversial war policies, the Mexican-American War. A key part of Polk's expansionist policies was highly controversial and faced criticism from figures like Abraham Lincoln and Henry David Thoreau. 10. Reluctant Candidate Polk was a dark horse candidate for the presidency, 
initially not sought after or expected to win the nomination. However, he emerged as a compromise candidate at the Democratic National Convention and secured the nomination. These unique aspects of Polk's life showcase his diverse range of experiences, accomplishments, and his sometimes controversial but undoubtedly impactful presidency.